Exercise one is a fairly straightforward um, little system. It's um, um, an alanine di dipeptide that we have in a, a water box. And um, the input file looks like this, where you obviously import these different modules. Um, you specify how you read um, the structure and um, what force field you're using, what water model you're using. Uh, and uh, in the other section, you create the system. You basically um, specify um, which constraints you will have. So you want to constrain, for instance, uh, the, any bond that has a hydrogen attached to it that allows you to do a quicker, uh, a longer time step of two femtoseconds. Uh, you can choose the integrator that we talked about um, uh, earlier. And uh, then the simulation context uh, here in this particular case, um, you, uh, you uh, specify the uh, PDB topology. Um, later on, we will go into loading amber files, so you would have to switch that out for amber topologies. Um, and uh, then you say what you want to do with the simulation. Uh, you uh, minimize it and you say how many iterations you want to do. All of this is already in the file and uh, the, the reporters that uh, have been added, um, they basically output this data um, every 100 steps, um, uh, the potential energy, the temperature. And in the end, you actually get a file that is called output underscore exercise one dot PDB. Um, and then you can open that uh, in a molecular viewer like VMD or Pymol or whichever you prefer. Here we will do it with VMD. And so uh, how about, uh, yeah, so then obviously the simulation after the, the minimization up, uh, occurs, uh, that's the last step. We go for a thousand steps on that. So in your terminal window, go to the exercise directory and try running the exercise by typing python exercise onepy and uh, see what, uh, what happens. Uh, you might get an error and it might look something like this. That means that you haven't exported the, um, the paths on your system. Um, so if you, if you see any of these errors, raise your hand and we'll, we'll stop. Otherwise, we'll, we'll move on. Um, but really, you should see something like this. Um, and we've run this before with, with Peter. Um, so you actually all should be set to go. Um, you know, we, we've all um, kind of gone through these. So does any, everyone see um, when you run these, uh, this exercise one file, creating system, what platform is being chosen? are at the point where you got your data and you um, you want to visualize it, obviously open it on VMD. If you have VMD, open it in PyMol by double clicking if you have PyMol installed on your computer and just uh, just see what that looks like on your box. If I, um, with this line up there, force field equals, um, and then you also specify if you're using uh, an explicit water model, you can, exp you can specify the XML file that that is in. Um, but uh, if you want to go beyond this, if you're interested to, um, to, to go beyond this, check out Li Ping's talk tomorrow morning at 9.30. Um, he's going to show you how you can basically extend what, what there is currently standard available and basically also um, parameterize uh, um, ligands that are not the standard amino acids that come with the force fields. And so if you're interested in, um, in putting in the water, as I already said, that's the second part of this, um, of this variable that you specify here, where uh, here in this case we are using TIP3P, um, and we're calling on TIP3P XML. Um, and just, I mean, you know, obviously uh, there, are, there are two extreme cases um, of, of solvent um, situations that we would encounter with these kind of simulations, either implicit or explicit water models. Uh, we all know that implicit is much faster, well, there are fewer atoms to track. But there's also less friction between uh, the atoms that you, that you track, and therefore the, the thing becomes much, much quicker. Um, you get bulk properties right, quote unquote, um, but you can't really um, get much information about the specific contacts um, between, um, bet between uh, water molecules and, uh, and protein residues. Um, explicit water models have much more atoms, much many, many more atoms to keep track of, makes it obviously much slower, but you get atomistic properties right, quote unquote. Um, so this is a sort of a leaned on to Li Ping's uh, slide from, the, from earlier this morning, um, where there are different types of um, explicit uh, solvent models. Um, obviously, they're all fixed point charges. Um, the ones uh, that are not amoeba or the ones that are not uh, Li Ping's uh, um, water model that he will talk about a little bit more as well tomorrow.
Um, and so uh, here are examples, tip 3P, for instance, a three-site model, uh, tip 4P, EW, four-site and uh, five-site, even six-site models. They become um, increasingly complex because they're trying to uh, explain, uh, you know, the, this actual structure and the uh, charge distribution in water and its, its geometry. Um, but you basically, uh, you know, you increase um, parameters, you increase uh, the computations, you decrease your actual sampling. So it really comes down to you and you choosing the flavor that is best for you. Um, yeah, so, but despite all of this, as Li Ping already pointed out, quite a bit of information can be extracted from from even such simple models. Um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how many of these cases this is true for, that the um, force fields exceed quantum mechanics. And so just a brief little um, outline of um, the idea behind implicit solvent models, very similar to the um, to the, uh, the thinking behind the Born-Oppenheimer approximation where you, um, you disconnect electrons from the nuclei because they are on different time scales. Here you can, in theory, disconnect waters from uh, the solute um, and uh, um, approximate uh, the, the electrostatic contribution to the solvent free energy um, and then also estimate the, um, the, the nonpolar contributions which have uh, entropic terms. Uh, for the electrostatic contribution, uh, the Born-Oppenheimer uh, approximation, uh, sorry, the generalized Born approximation is um, um, one of the most commonly used um, ways um, to compute this. And by adding a surface area term, uh, you get GBSA, um, and now you, you, you try to capture this um, last term in this equation as well. Okay, so uh, the solvent models that are available in OpenMM, uh, we can see right here, um, we have, uh, all of these um, ex explicit uh, water models up here, TIP 3P, TIP 4P, EW, TIP 5P if you want, uh, SPC, and then a number of implicit solvent models, um, as we can see on this slide right here. You can find all of this in, your, in the manual. Um, and um, you can also choose the different types of integrators. We heard about this before from Peter. Um, where you basically, basically specify the temperature, uh, friction coefficient, and the time step. Um, but you don't have to uh, do the Langevin integrator. Um, all of these here are possible as well. Um, but why, why don't we find out for ourselves where exactly we can, we can um, get these informations, uh, this information from? And I already highlighted this earlier. Uh, this website here is incredibly helpful. Uh, so the URL is on top, simtk.org, API docs, openmm, API 5 underscore zero Python. That will get you um, something that looks like this, but the right-hand side is blank. And um, if you then, you can, uh, let me see, where is it? Here it is. Right. So either you can navigate on the left-hand side through different classes manually, or if you're interested in a specific class, like integrator, You select that from there, and this little pull-down menu right here will show you the dependencies, everything that is connected to that. So for instance, you were interested in the Langevin integrator. It gives you everything you might want to know about that particular integrator, um, how to set temperatures, how to get them, and so forth. Um, so if you get stuck with something, or if you want to figure out a little bit more about uh, a specific component in the script that we provide you with, um, then this is a really good resource for that. You can also set non-bonded interactions in OpenMM. Um, you, know, you can specify the cutoff, um, and uh, this table here is also in the, in the manual. will give you an idea of what that all means. Um, so for instance, uh, PME, uh, it's the particle mesh Ewald method that is uh, used to, uh, to, to cut off uh, long-range interactions um, in uh, periodic boundary condition simulations. Um, and this is another thing that, that is in basically in this, uh, in this uh, input Python file that you um, have up in front of you. Um, and then the constraints that I mentioned earlier, these are uh, by default, um, water molecules are by default constrained in their vibrational end, uh, and angles, uh, so as to, as to make them uh, less expensive. Um, and that's a sort of standard um, protocol. But, um, and that's by default um, activated. So if you want to um, prevent that from happening, at the very bottom, you can see how you can set rigid waters to false um, in the systems class. 
Um, the constraints allow you to have larger time steps. Basically, this means it speeds up your calculation, um, but you have to be aware, uh, aware of the fact that uh, this also means uh, uh, you introduce additional levels of approximation, and so it really comes down to what you feel comfortable with using. So uh, it's, it's a good practice, in, uh, in my experience, to use none while, I, while you heat up the system. Uh, and then once the system is equilibrated at, uh, at your um, simulation temperature, 300 Kelvin, for instance, you can choose H bonds and then run a production run at two femtosecond second time steps um, without any um, worries that uh, the system might blow up, quote unquote. Reporters give you an idea about what's uh, happening in each time step, for instance, uh, the kinetic energy, potential energies, um, the densities, uh, the temperature. Um, but uh, more on this also by Li Ping tomorrow afternoon. So let's move on to exercise two, where we simulate a villain headpiece and implicit solvent. Um, so to do this, uh, copy exercise one uh, dot pi to exercise two dot pi, and um, use uh, the PDB file input underscore exercise two as a starting structure for this. And if you're doing everything right, we should get an error message that says that residue one was not found. Um, and this is because there are missing atoms uh, in, this, uh, in this protein. And when there are missing hydrogens, for instance, then we can use the modeler class to put those onto our residue. So in the next step, we'll, we'll get to know the modeler class. So you can, you can uh, take a crystal structure, for instance, that usually doesn't have any hydrogen atoms uh, attached to it. Um, and you can run the modeler um, uh, class by, by calling this line right here. Um, you can add hydrogens, and then obviously also you can add a, a water box to that. Um, and there are m multiple uh, functions available for this modeler class. So you can add hydrogens, you can add solvent, you can um, specify the box size, uh, you can look at the ionic, ionic strength, um, positive, negative ions. Um, so there are quite a few things available, but right here and right now, all we want to really do is get rid of this error. And so by simply putting this line, modeler equals modeler, PDB topology dot PDB positions. And then in the systems, in the system uh, class, you, uh, you specify modeler topology. And then you try running it again. And so your code should look like this. So this is, yeah, this is basically the schematics that you, that you, um, that you can apply. This is, this is the syntax. Um, and um, basically in real life situations where you actually work with crystal structures um, and you don't, you have missing residues, you have missing atoms, this is where the modeler class comes in and um, makes OpenMM usable for, for these kind of problems. So there were two things as you, as you might have learned to get this thing to run. Uh, first off, as I said, we're, we're simulating villain an implicit solvent and so we used, we used uh, uh, example one, exercise one. Remember that was an alanine dipeptide in an explicit water box. And so in addition to adding the hydrogens for leucine that were missing, um, we also had to, uh, uh, to remove the explicit water um, specification and uh, replace it with the implicit. Otherwise it would be, uh, it expected us to have a water box where there is none. And so um, by a painful little trial and error kind of exercise, you, got, you pretty much converged onto a code that looks something like this, um, where you not only built the model, but you also changed uh, the water from, amber 99, from, uh, from uh, TIP 3P to Amber 99 OBC, according to that um, word handout that uh, the Joy sent you last night. 
And when you do that, when you move from an explicit water molecule uh, so, uh, system to an implicit solvent system, um, the friction parameters will change as well. So we had one per picosecond in the explicit um, uh, um, case, and now it has to be at 91 per picosecond for this particular force field. All right, so if your input file looks now like this, then, then you're good to go. If it doesn't, check it out. Um, the force field is nine, uh, Ember 99 SB. The water model is, um, instead of um, TIP 3P, it's now Ember 99 OBC. After you specify a force field in the modeler class, you specify uh, that you want to add hydrogens to uh, this force field parameter, and then it should work. And remember, the 91 per picosecond. So this is kind of a, this is kind of a, a of a learning uh, experience for you. Of course, uh, this uh, it's. Uh, it shows you that, that you have to be very wary of what happens when you move from one type of a system to another. You can't just blindly copy these input files and then expect that they work. And if they don't, then you just throw away the software or throw away the laptop or get all angry. Um, it's probably somehow fixable and this is how it, how it had to be fixed. Um, now, let's do the whole thing in explicit solvent. Why don't we? Um, so we, we take the same, um, the same um, PDB file from uh, exercise two. Um, but just to keep exercise two.py, let, let's copy exercise one.py into exercise three.py. And we continue using the Amber 99 SB force field. And we also use the tip 3P water model. So now what we have to do, this is sort of the third picture of that modeler slide that I showed where we go from the crystal structure to a crystal structure with added hydrogens to a crystal structure with added hydrogens in a water box. That's what the, um, what the, what the modeler um, class will specify in this particular example. And uh, why don't we add a one nanometer padding around our protein while we're at it? So that's for the water box. Just uh, let's, let's see if, if we all have the same thing in our Python files. So uh, we copied exercise one into exercise three. We used exercise two, that PDB as a starting structure. And uh, we stuck with the force field 99SB and to tip 3 ps explicit model. And then we added the water box with a padding of one nanometer to it. And so this is what your input file should look like. Um, if you haven't gotten it to run, uh, make sure that you actually created the modeler um, um, object and then you, um, you add not only the hydrogens but also the solvent where uh, you specify what type of water mo molecules and what your padding is 